Hey, welcome to my, I guess you could call it final Ryzen memory and overclocking benchmark video. A lot has happened in the past few days. First, I had my G-Skill RGB memory die left and right. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, three of the four modules don't have any memory function anymore, and the fourth one does post, but it has no RGBs anymore. So I've heard back from G-Skill, and they basically said, well, um, you might need different memory for Ryzen. Well, duh, but... Uh, why did it work for two days and then start dying off? That makes no sense. So, um, well, if I have any updates on this, I'll let you guys know. <clears throat> of course, now I'm using my Corsair kit, and that's been working just fine. It's working at 2933 megahertz, and that is also uh, why I made some extra benchmarks in this video which I wasn't planning on initially, but I think it'll shed a light on how Ryzen works and if Ryzen is actually suffering from the dual channel versus the quad channel of the 6900K. Uh, again, this video also has nothing to do with the bug I recently discovered that if you put your Ryzen PC into sleep mode or standby and take it back out, suddenly your processor will seem overclocked. But as it's looking right now, it's most likely not, or I can almost 99% certainly say it's not. Something goes wrong with a clock ticker in Windows or on the motherboard or, or somewhere at least. And that's probably also why CPU Z was confused. And what happens is that your benchmarks are, are artificially boosted because the clock is running slower and you're getting higher results because of that. So. That video is doing really well, but it just seems to be a bug, guys. It's probably not running that fast, or I can basically assure you it's not running that fast. I had someone in the comments who said he did, he tried the same. He noticed the same bug, but his was running at 4.8 gigahertz. Yeah, that's not going to happen on, on water or on air. So, okay. Anyway, let's uh, dive into the benchmarks. I'll uh, try and do it this I'll do it the same again as I did last time. First, I will run all the benchmarks and I will have a time code um, what was it? Here here somewhere somewhere over here where you can skip those benchmarks and go to the part where I discuss and talk about the benchmarks. Now, last time I talked about Ryzen versus the 4770K. We'll do that again this time, but looking at memory overclock and memory and CPU overclock at the same time, and then see how the results compare. So, see you on the other side.
welcome back. Okay, so let's first uh, go over the specifications again. Um, let's see here. So I have the Ryzen 7 1700X, and I'm using the Corsair memory clocked to 2933 MHz uh, at a cast latency of 15. Uh, also, my overclock tests were done with the Ice Bear 360, and I'll probably make a different video where I show some footage of it installing it, etc. But let's just suffice to say that uh, it's providing beefy cooling to enable a, a stable overclock, basically. Okay, here's the little screen which shows the stock settings of my Ryzen 7 and the overclock settings. Just to reiterate, all tests were performed on a cleanly installed Windows 10 Pro. I used a, used a different SSD for my old PC. And I installed the AMD chipset drivers and the NVIDIA drivers, nothing else. And I didn't do any recommended tweaking that AMD has put out to all the other reviewers. Why? While I don't disagree with the tweaks, um, I think someone buying a Ryzen PC right now or building one doesn't know what these tweaks are. And the benchmarks I do are the performance he will see out of the box. So I find that very important. And I have no doubt that down the road, there will be improvements for Ryzen. Because uh, Wendell recently uh, pointed out that there's a really ske real scheduling problem in Windows with Ryzen, who doesn't understand Ryzen correctly. And there's probably going to be a kernel patch for Microsoft soon, which will fix that, which will boost performance, uh, sorry, which will boost performance in certain situations. And there's some other stuff going on with Ryzen, which makes it so that games and other things aren't optimally using it. Now, don't expect a 50% boost or something like that, but certain optimizations, especially if game code can be optimized to use it better, can certainly see maybe 10, 20% improvement, getting it up to par to a 7700K, for instance. Because the results we're seeing right now with uh, Ryzen versus a 7700K, for instance, is that basically IPC can match it, just not in games, which is odd. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's uh, get into the benchmarks. Okay, CPU benchmarks first. And here we can clearly see uh, a thing that will be visible during this these charts is if memory performance is limiting Ryzen or not. The yellow bar is a stock running Ryzen, but with 2933 CAS 15 memory. And the, the light green or the darker green bar is with overclocked, uh, the overclocked CPU and higher running memory. So here we see that between the stock Ryzen and the higher memory clock Ryzen, even in multi-core, there's only a few points difference, which is too little to, it differs a few points every test anyway. So basically the Cinebench test has no benefit with faster memory. Okay. Of course, the faster clock speed really did help. <laughs> okay. Then we have uh, Corona and we went from two minutes 31 to two minutes 23 with faster memory. So Corona does become faster with faster memory. And then it does about two minutes and eight seconds when overclocked and having faster memory. That's less than half than the stock 4770K. And if you look at the overclocked 4770K, which would be more fair, uh, it comes closer, but it's still one and a half times as fast. So Ryzen really wins here. Handbrake, we basically see the same thing. Going from a stock Ryzen to higher memory bandwidth Ryzen, we see a one frame-ish improvement, but overclocking the CPU, we see a definite performance gain. Compared to the stock 4770K, the overclocked Ryzen, not fair, I know, but it's almost twice as fast. So that's, that's real progress there. I mean, if you're replacing your PC and things get twice as fast, that's a really big jump. Geekbench, uh, we see that adding memory speed does make the benchmark run a bit quicker, but adding an overclock to that definitely makes it a lot quicker. And this seems to beat uh, the 4770K unless single core overclocked. But 
we know we kind of know that by, by now. Use a benchmark. Multi-threaded, uh, it, it always wins. Adding more memory bandwidth does nothing for this benchmark, but adding uh, more uh, megahertz to the CPU, so overclocking the CPU, definitely works. Okay, CPU-Z, which is an interesting benchmark. It shows almost no gains with memory ba bandwidth, but overclocking the CPU certainly makes it uh, perform a lot faster. It even makes it so that the Ryzen has the fastest single core performance of all the ver variants, the overclocked Ryzen, and multi-core, well, there's just no competition. Super Pi Mod, this is where the Intel, and I think Intel's memory controller still shines. The latency that the slower memory has, although it's also, of course, a lower cast latency, so that could explain that a little bit, um, yeah, but overclocked 4770K just, just spanks the overclocked Ryzen. So uh, even the overclocked Ryzen can't get it, get close to the stock 4770K. So W prime, we basically see the, th the same thing. Um, at the 1024 megabyte test, we see that the overclocked Ryzen is a lot faster. Just adding memory bandwidth doesn't do that much. And, uh, but this is a four thread benchmark. I did add a th 16 thread result. And there you can see that if you do use all the CPUs and don't use something that's limited to four threads only, Ryzen really shines. Okay, let's move on to the synthetic GPU benchmarks. Looking at 3D Mark Vantage. Uh, I finally got the stock one to run. It didn't run in the previous for, uh, iteration. I don't know why. I think the results were blocked on uh, 3D Mark's website. But now it worked, so I updated the chart. Um, we see that initially the overclocked 4770K wins in total score and certainly in graphic score. But the overclocked 1700X uh, actually manages better in overall score. But that's only because the physics scores are almost twice as high. Uh, looking at the graphics score, and this is an older benchmark, we see that the Intel is uh, providing or using more horsepower from the GPU than the Ryzen does at this point in time. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions about this on the internet, and, and there's even been, been death threats to uh, Gamers Nexus and other reviewers. Come on, what the... F anyway, um, I think Gamers Nexus did a really, really great analysis. I just don't completely agree with their conclusion. Their conclusion is very much uh, theoretical-based and not practical-based. Uh, I'll get back to you later on when we uh, finish the, the benchmarks. Uh, because I have a different view on it. I don't agree, disagree with their results. I just disagree with their conclusion. So, uh, moving on. We have Ice Storm Extreme. And this, again, is an older benchmark. It's, it's basically made to run on uh, mobile phone hardware. You see thousands of frames per second. And we see that the overclocked Ryzen is actually able to get close to the overclocked 4770K. But again, that's only because of the physics score. So the CPU port is very fast, but when combined with graphics, we see that even the overclocked 1700X cannot match the performance the 4770K could provide stock. So, okay. Firestrike, it's basically the same deal. Total and combined uh, Ryzen wins but that's only because the physics score is a lot higher. But because this benchmark is a lot more heavy graphic-wise, the GPU scores are all almost the same. And once we go to Firestrike Extreme and Firestrike Ultra, we'll see that the GPU scores start to, to even out because we're basically not testing the GPU anymore. We're uh, CPU anymore. We're testing the GPU. These are GPU benchmarks. So if your CPU is at least fast enough to drive all the pixels that the GPU can possibly do, well, you can't compare the CPU anymore because the GPU is the, is the bottleneck. More about that later. 
Moving on to extreme, we see what I'm talking about. Uh, the Ryzen gets a higher total score, but the graphic scores within 100 points is everywhere almost the same. So we're definitely hitting a GPU bottleneck here. We see that the physics score is a lot higher, so the computational power of the CPU is there. But in the end result, if you're testing graphics, it doesn't matter if you get 100% or 150% if 100% is enough. Okay. And Ultra, basically the same chart. We're very much GPU limited here. And I'm running a GTX 1080, so... 3D Mark Time Spy, well, GPU limited. There's nothing else I can say. Okay, here we have VR Mark, and VR Mark is an interesting thing, a uh, benchmark, because it tests two different type of tests. One, it tests the orange room, which is often CPU limited, and then it tests the blue room, which is graphically a lot more intensive, which is is often GPU limited. So here we see again that the overclocked 4770K is winning from the overclocked Ryzen. So once you have enough GPU horsepower, uh, the faster CPU will win. But if in the blue room the GPU horsepower is the bottleneck, even a lower CPU will return the same results. So that's what we're seeing here. Still. Uh, the overclocked Ryzen gets 216 FPS in the orange room, so that is in no way limiting your VR experience. Heaven? Looking at Heaven is a bit strange. Um, the 4770K wins, but again, that is because this is a graphical benchmark. And in the basic preset, we are testing the GPU, but the CPU becomes a bottleneck because the GPU is fast enough. In the extreme and custom presets, we see that the results get equalized because now the GPU is the bottleneck because we're using higher graphic settings. Okay, I'm hoping that's starting to make sense by now. Okay, let's uh, move on to games. So, <laughs> here's the Quake 2 The Reckoning test again with, uh, with the Crusher.dm2 time demo. And we see that the overclocked Ryzen and even the higher bandwidth, memory bandwidth Ryzen, really raises the FPS. Does it make any have any use? No. It's still fun to see this Quake 2 time demo run at 700 frames per second, though. <laughs> okay, next up we have Ashes of the Singularity. And just like I showed you in my previous benchmark, I did a DirectX 11 low setting at 1080p, GPU focused, and I did a high setting DirectX 12, uh, CPU focused at uh, 2560 by 1440. And basically, uh, when it's GPU focused, we get a lot more frames out of the um, 4770K, especially the overclocked one. But when it's CPU focused, the overclock Ryzen actually managed to provide a higher frame rate. So this is exactly also what Steve uh, from Gamers Nexus and all the other benchmarks are trying to say. The CPU is very good in calculation intensive tasks. That's also why it wins from an older CPU in those tasks. But for some reason with the current architecture, it's not, not optimized for gaming or oh, I don't know how else to say it. It's not optimized for gaming. So while in some workloads it can be twice as fast as the Intel counterpart, with gaming workloads, there seems to be something holding it back. Because comparing IPC to how it's performing in gaming isn't matching up. And it could be that it needs uh, driver optimizations. Uh, maybe the NVIDIA drivers we're all using are compiled using an Intel compiler. And once uh, NVIDIA also uh, puts in Ryzen AMD optimizations, which no one has yet because it's been just released, no one has been able to optimize for this, but they've been optimizing for Intel for the past five to 10 years. So once Windows catches up and drivers catch up and game compilers catch up and everything that compiles it from the source code to the working code, which now only has Intel 
optimizations in there will also have the AMD optimizations, I think some of these charts are really going to change, but only time can tell. Currently, it's, uh, well, the overclocked one won in the CPU focused benchmark, but it lost GPU wise. Looking at GTA 5, an overclocked 1700X to 4 gigahertz, or basically an overclocked Ryzen 7 to 4 gigahertz, is able to, uh, well, it's equal at ultra and very high. It does pretty well at very high high. And in normal mode, the overclock wins from the stock 4770K, but the overclocked 770K, 4770K, uh, still wins. And that's the three, four to four year old CPU. So civilization, um, messages on your phone during videos. Civilization, uh, looking at minimum minimum for DirectX 11, we see that the overclocked Ryzen can beat the stock 4770K, but the overclocked 4770K, how many times am I gonna say 4770K? Anyway, um, beats it every time. So combined with graphics, with real-time 3D graphics, the Intel chips are just faster. Looking at the AI benchmarks, we basically see the same, the same thing. Now I have no doubt that if you'd run an eight or 16 threaded AI simulation on the Ryzen, it would be twice as fast as the 4770K. But combined with a game and graphics running at the same time, these are the results. Okay, let's move on to other and combined tests. First, we see memory throughput. And this is very interesting because the Ryzen is using a lot faster memory, but it's not getting the same amount of bandwidth the Intel has. So what does that mean? Is the Ryzen memory controller bad? Maybe, but the Intel memory controller is just better. <laughs> At larger byte sizes though, we see the overclocked Ryzen pulling ahead. Looking at latency, this is really where Intel shines. For some reason, their memory and memory controller has a lot lower latency than the Ryzen system. Uh, of course, we're using DDF4 against DDR, DDR3, and DDR3 had a lot lower cast latency, so that can explain the difference a little bit, but it shouldn't be this high. This is a very interesting test for myself because I use Vegas Pro uh, 14 build 201 to render all my videos, and using CPU only memory uh, rendering, Basically, going from a stock 4770K to the overclocked Ryzen, it shaves off almost 20 minutes of rendering time, and that's significant. But even when using my GTX 1080 in GPU mode or GPU assisted, because the part of the rendering still happens on the CPU with Vegas, and it does use the GPU for effects and other transitions, but using the overclocked Ryzen, it renders the video in almost half the time than a stock 4770K would. So that's a, a huge improvement. A video that would render three hours before now takes one and a half hours. That's, that's insane. So if you do anything with video editing, this is highly recommended. Moving on to Nova Bench, we see that the overclocked uh, Ryzen is finally able to pull ahead, except again in the graphics scores. <laughs> Past Mac performance tests, um, well, we basically see the same thing. The CPU score is very high, but 2D graphics are lower, 3D graphics are lower, memory benchmarks are lower, and disk, eh, it's about the same. PC Mark 8 sees a giant boost uh, by using the overclocked Ryzen. And that's again because this is a thread limited benchmark, so we don't really see the benefit of using eight cores here. Spec view, uh, spec view per 1211. Again, a four thread limited benchmark. So overclock does better in some benchmarks, in others, it doesn't really matter much, uh, but the Intel still beats it in every test almost. Power usage, um, idle, overclocking doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, on under load, 
holy shit. <laughs> Even the memory overclock made a lot of difference. Or overclock, the higher set memory. And overclocking the CPU, I mean, under the power supply tests, it shot a, a past 400 watts. So get a decent power supply. That's basically, it. That's basically it. Okay, so those were the benchmarks. So what does it all mean? Well, let me give you my conclusions and why I think um, the Gamers Nexus conclusions have been uh, received negatively while they only reported on theoretical findings. And theoretically, they are correct. A 7700K will give you more frames per second than a uh, Ryzen CPU will. So if you have a unlimited graphic horsepower, let's say, you would be better off with an Intel chip because then you would get higher frames or more beautiful pictures or whatever. But we don't have unlimited graphic capabilities. We have, for instance, like I have, a GTX 1080. So when that GTX 1080 is the limiting factor, we see the Ryzen perform on par or sometimes even a little bit better but let's say on par with the Intel counterparts. And in other benchmarks, other than graphics, basically AMD slaughters the Intels, or at least the desktop CPUs. And with the 6900K, it trade blow, trades blows, but I'm looking at my 4770K against my 700, 1700X Ryzen, and anything else than graphical benchmarks, the Ryzen does better. So, is the Ryzen bad for gaming? And Jay's Two Cents had a really good video about this yesterday. No, the Ryzen in itself is not bad for gaming. But compared with other chips, there are other CPUs out there that are better for gaming at the same price. So let that sink in. So getting a Ryzen does not mean you'll have horrible game performance, especially if you game at 1440p or 4K, your gaming performance will be fine. It'll likely be fine for the next few years until we get GPUs that have four times the horsepower. And then we start seeing the same thing as we now see with all the 1080 benchmarks that the Intel CPU will pull ahead because for some reason, it's able to pull more frames out of the GPU if the horsepower is there, which currently it isn't. So if you're running dual or whatever Titan XPs, yes, maybe you'll see a difference. But if you have the money for dual Titan XPs, I guess you also have money for a 6900K. I don't know. But running a, a normalish system and having the Ryzen as a CPU will not give you frame rate bottlenecks in current games with normal or current 4040p or 4k graphic settings. If you are a competitive, competitive Counter-Strike player and you have a 200 hertz monitor and you like everything on low and you need the most FPS possible, you are probably better off with an Intel chip at this moment in time. Again, as everyone is saying, and as I mentioned before, Wendell said, there are some problems with the Windows scheduler and how it's dividing things between cores and moving processes. There was a Tech City uh, talk between four people recently, and I'll link it in the description below. <coughs> and they had a really interesting discussion about this. And he says, I don't see this happening in Linux, but AMD provided patches for Linux, but this problem does still exist in Windows, of course, Microsoft has to apply these patches and then send them to us the Windows update. So it's very interesting what's going to happen in the coming few months. And maybe Ryzen will catch up in gaming performance. Maybe it won't. And the architecture just isn't engineered for that. Uh, I will say this. During all the marketing, uh, AMD really hammered on gaming. And that's where I think they went wrong. This CPU is, in my opinion, a great CPU. It performs really well, and a lot of tasks I do daily have become a lot faster than they were on my old 4770K, but also faster than they would be on a new 7700K. So, 
It really depends on what you want to do. If you have a 200 hertz monitor, get an Intel. If you don't, and you game at 60 FPS or maybe 100 at 1440p or ultra wide or whatever, Ryzen will be fine for the next few years. That is my conclusion, and you can do with it whatever you want. Um, I hope my benchmarks help you. Let me know down in the comments what you think. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it's been great. So I'll be back more in the future with some other Ryzen tests I have ideas for. And of course, some other normal content for my channel. Uh, I will be doing a bit more computer and gaming focused tests in the future. So maybe subscribe, maybe don't, and whatever. I'll uh, see you guys in the future. Bye-bye.